Good evening. I want to welcome everyone who's joining us online tonight for our Bible class. My name is Slate Moore. I'm the senior minister here at Central. We just finished up a series on the life of Joseph, and tonight we're going to begin a new series, and I'll tell you more about that in just a few minutes. But I do have just a few announcements that I want to share with you, some things that are coming up. First of all, there's going to be a food giveaway here at the building this Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. And so if you'd like to come and help with that or if you'd like to come and receive some food, then mark that on your calendar. Also, this Saturday, there's going to be a bridal shower for Hannah Venable, and this is going to be at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And if you have any questions about that, you can ask Kayla Venable, or you can call the office and talk to Becky. Also, the summer trip meeting has been rescheduled to January 31st. And so, uh, again, mark that on your calendar. Uh, the date is going to be sometime in, in July, and, and I'm sure more details will be given out about this, but if you plan as a family to be a part of that trip, then again, mark your calendar for January 31st to be a part of that, that meeting which will take place after our Sunday morning worship. Also, Aileen Cook, uh, she has been moved to a new room, which is 119A. She also has a new telephone number, and that will be in the midweek. It will also go into our bulletin, so if you'd like to contact her, make sure that you pick up one of those, or again, you can call the office. We can give you that number. And then also, Edna J., her fever, praise the Lord, has gone down, and she is feeling some better. And so we thank God for that, and we're going to lift her up again. And all those who are continuing to battle COVID and other sicknesses and illness, and we're going to pray for all these in just a few minutes. But let me tell you about our study tonight. It's on the Lord's Supper, and this is going to go for the next eight weeks. If you're a new Christian, or if you've been a Christian for years, let me tell you something, you will benefit from this study. I've watched the series, and I have learned so much. It's a series done by John Mark Hicks, and he just does a tremendous job of explaining it. I mean, if you've ever had questions about the significance of the Lord's Supper, why we take the Lord's Supper, and many other questions like that, then I'm telling you, this, this series will benefit you, and I want to encourage you to watch everyone to the very end. I guarantee you it will, it will be a blessing for you and your family. But before we do that, I want to share a scripture for you to meditate on this week and then I'm going to have a prayer and then we're going to go straight in to the lesson by John Mark Hicks. The scripture I just want you to think about this week is Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 29 through 31, which says, Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He is the one who has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of malicious behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you just thanking you for all that you do. And, and Father, as we're going to see through this study, 
We have so much to be grateful for. The sacrifice that was made on our behalf by Jesus. Father, should just cause us to break out in joy and, and gratitude just for our salvation and all that was done. Father, we just want to lift up to you those who are struggling right now, both spiritually and physically. For those who are struggling physically, Father, there's so much going on right now in our world. Of course, COVID-19, and there have been lots of people who have been sick, who have even died. And, and Father, we're just asking you to rid us of this terrible virus, if it be your will. We know that ultimately, you know what's best for us. And so we just lay that at your feet. And Father, we know that there are others among us who have other things, other challenges physically that are going on. But for those who are struggling spiritually, Father, we know that you can bring healing. You're the only one who can bring healing. And so, Father, we just pray that you would help those who are struggling spiritually to come to you. And Father, may we as Christians point to you as the answer. Father, we are just so grateful that Edna J. is doing better. And we just want to continue to lift her up, her and Danny. Pray that you'll continue to heal her and uh, help her to recover. And again, Father, we're, we're just so grateful that her fever is finally coming down and she's, she's feeling better. Father, we pray that you'll be with our study tonight. Pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds. Help us to see what we need to see through this study. And we pray this prayer in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Come to the table of mercy. Prepare with the wine and the bread. Welcome to Come to the Table. My name is John Mark Hicks. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with you this story of the table in the Bible. And over this series, we'll be moving from creation to Israel to Jesus and his ministry to the church and ultimately to the banquet that is yet to come, the Messianic banquet. And so as we walk through this story of God surrounding the table, gathering around a table, we want to think about what that means for us and, and for the church. But I think to begin, we have to start at the beginning and think about why did God create us in the first place? And when we ask that question, it's a, it's a question that three-year-olds ask as well as graduate students ask. And it's hard to get inside the head of God. But I think we can be kind of clear about something in particular. And that is God created us to include us in the orbit of God's love. God created us to share life with God, to commune with God, to enjoy God, and for God to enjoy us. You know that line in Scripture that says over and over again, you are my delight or God delights in us. God enjoys us, and we are called and invited to enjoy God. So communion is really at the heart of this, and God creates out of a love, not out of a need or out of a necessity or out of some kind of bad motive. I mean, God doesn't create so that God has somebody to play with. God doesn't create because God has somebody now God can manipulate. God creates because God loves us. And it's kind of analogous to the way parents decide to have children. Now, not every child is born in the ideal circumstance, to be sure. But you might reflect on why do human beings have kids? I mean, there's no economic benefit in it, right? I mean, there's no, it's not going to lower the stress level in the home. But you have kids because... You want to share the love that you have, the love between this couple, and, and they want to lavish that love upon the other. And God, I think uh, there's an analogy there. 
that God created to include us in the orbit of His love. We see a picture of this in John chapter 17 and in the prayer that Jesus prays just before He heads off to the garden. And in this prayer, which He prays at a table, by the way, is at the table where Peter and the, uh, the disciples had their feet washed by Jesus. And at that table, Jesus tells them, I got a new commandment for you. Love one another. And this is how everybody will know you are my disciples when you love one another. And so at that table, Jesus prays. And John chapter 17 is that prayer. And at the end of that prayer, he's praying to God and he says, God, the Father, you have loved me from the foundation of the world. Since the world was created, even before the world was created, you have loved me and, and you have loved them just as you have loved me. Chapter 17, verse 23, which is an astounding statement. You have loved them just as you have loved me. The love that the Father and the Son have for each other is a love that spills over and is just as applied to the disciples as it is to Jesus. God loves Jesus just like God loves us. Or maybe we better put it the other way. God loves us just like God loves Jesus. Now, Jesus, we can understand. <laughs> you, who wouldn't love Jesus, right? I mean, what parent wouldn't love to have a kid like that? But God loves us. Even those who will very quickly, after this prayer is prayed, desert Jesus and betray Jesus. And God still loves them. But the point is, God created in order to share the love that the Father and the Son have for each other. And in the last verse of that prayer, in the last statement of that prayer, Jesus says, you know, the world knows you, I mean, the Father knows you, and I know you, and that the whole point is that God has acted so that the love you have for me, the love between the Father and the Son, might be in you and I in you. In other words, the goal of God is to share God's love and to commune and enjoy. And that's why table is important. Because table in the history of the world, in the history of Christianity, in the history of your own relationships in your family, the table is a place where people love one another. It's a place of hospitality. It's a place of shared food. It's where love can be expressed and experienced. God has always had a table in mind because the table is the place where communion happens. It's where love happens. It's where we can delight in one another and enjoy one another. Sometimes we think that that the cross has been God's goal all along and there's a sense in which the cross is part of God's plan. Absolutely. But the cross, or the altar upon which Jesus is sacrificed, the cross is not an end in itself. The cross is for the sake of the communion. The cross is where God reconciles the world to God's self and brings us into communion with God. So the altar leads to a table. The altar upon which Jesus has sacrificed the cross effects the remission of sins and the forgiveness of sins and the communion and relationship and reconciliation. And that reconciliation then is expressed in the table. Communion. So the altar is for the sake of the table. We have an altar so that we can have a table. Because God had a table in the beginning when God created the world. God created Adam and Eve and human beings and called them to drink and eat and live in the provision of the garden and enjoy this communion with God. God rested in that world. God rested on the seventh day. 
and coming to dwell in the garden along with the human beings he created, there God delighted and rested and enjoyed. And human beings ate and drank and served and loved in the garden. So from the very beginning, God created for the table or God created for communion. And in our sin, we disrupted that communion. We broke that communion. And we acted in foolish ways. And we have all acted in foolish ways ever since. And so the cross becomes necessary because of our rebellion and because of our foolishness. So God comes in Christ and lays himself on the altar and offers a sacrifice before God for the sake of the table. You see, the altar leads to the table. And the table is where we experience that communion with God. And we can see it in the big picture as well, not only in the beginning, but also in the end. The goal of God. And the goal of God is pictured in several different ways, but one of the ways in which we have a picture of this story in the Bible is in Jesus' ministry where he talks about those who will come from the east and the west and the north and the south, and they will sit down at the table with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of God. And that's a picture of what's coming, the messianic banquet that God then in the beginning and in the end, that is the goal, that God has a table in mind. Because what God yearns for and what God wants is communion. To experience the love, to share the love, to share the life. And that's the story of the table in the Bible. Sometimes we can become a little myopic about the table and think it's only about one thing. And we can get so focused on that that we lose sight of the bigger and larger dimensions of the narrative of the table in the Bible. And what we want to do in this series is try to unpack a little bit of that larger story while at the same time trying to understand the more particular story. We call it several different things in the church. We call it the table of the Lord. We call it the Lord's Supper. Paul uses both of that both of that terminology in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 11. But it's also called communion. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup for which we give thanks is not a communion, a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread which, we, which is blessed, is it not a participation or a communion in the body of Christ. For we are one body. We're, we're many members, but when we eat the bread, Paul says, we become one body. Because in that eating and drinking in the presence of God, at the table of the Lord, in the Lord's meal or Lord's supper, there is a communion that takes place that is not only a communion of those who are gathered around the table that we can see with our eyes, there's also a communion that takes place between God and us, God and the community. And it becomes a, a moment in time, in space, with bread, with wine, that we experience, we taste with our taste buds, we feel it with the drink that goes down, through, goes down our throat, we taste the goodness of God, that God is here to commune with us. God is not absent from the table. God is present at the table. And God is here at the table to enjoy us and we to enjoy God. It's the way it was in the beginning. It's the way it was in the end. It will be in the end. And it's the way it ought to be now when we sit at table together.